One of the most common search terms for women in the dating, mating, and relating realm is why men pull away. Why does this happen? Why do guys seem to want to, in the beginning, invest in a relationship only to do a 180, a turnaround, a pullback, um, and sometimes worse, a complete disappearing act, which we call as ghosting? Why does this happen? You know, it's interesting. Before I dive into that, I want to share something that I posted on my social media that I think might help understand this. I, I posted the following. I want to read this to you all. Um, it's, it's based on a compilation of information I've gotten from other people. And the, the post goes like this. Courting was replaced by dating and dating has been replaced with hooking up. If true, why is that? Why? Okay, so what, what is really being said here and how does this relate? And by the way, this is a, a sweeping generalization that may or may not be true. And yet at the same time, it might feel true for a lot of people. So the belief about courting was that at some time in the past, men who were very intentional about marrying a person would go through some sort of... Um, some some sort of acts, if you will, by by maybe doing chaperoned uh, dates with a person, being interviewed by the person's mother and father, and usually a very quick uh, segue to the altar. Okay, but I think what was unique about courting, and I'm not suggesting that there wasn't hooking up back in the day, and there wasn't just dating back in the day, but courting was something intentional. And this is true for a lot of cultures that certainly had arranged marriage and whatnot. Now, I would say that courting today is almost non-existent, at least here in the United States. And what replaced it is dating. And dating is basically your trial run with someone to see if you want to invest in a possible long-term relationship. And I say trial run, it's more like these days, it almost feels like shoe shopping. In other words, you go to a department store, you try on a pair of shoes, you may or may not walk out with a pair of shoes and you can go back. And, and if you buy your shoes from Nordstrom's, you can purchase your shoes, wear them for six months and return them and get a full refund. Okay. What I think's happened today in dating, and this is predominantly because of these swipe devices, we, we have basically, we have we have not eliminated, we have, have created the perception that human beings are rather disposable and they're easy to replace. Let me repeat that. The perception is that human beings are rather disposable and easy to replace. So with the swipe at Advent, there's the belief that, hey, you know what, or excuse me, in the current dating marketplace, um, Basically, if you, you meet up with someone and you, you, you want to pursue them physically, but you're like, nah, they're not the one, you could just go back online and replace them. That's what's happened through this medium of technology. The other thing that's happened, and I think this is predominantly because of birth control, is that the access to non-consequential sex, and what I mean by the consequence of having a baby, uh, and by the way, you know, condoms also contribute to this as well, is allows for more freer sex without any commitment. And so this, I think, is one of the major differences in the way we perceive the past versus the way things are currently happening in the dating mating marketplace. OK, so how does this relate to men pulling away? I think one of the biggest challenges today in the dating marketplace is that for the most part, we're meeting total strangers, for the most part. When you meet a total stranger, you don't know their backstory. You rarely know their backstory. You know very little about their um, childhood, their upbringing, people associated with their lives. So we have to do a lot more digging in the early phases to see if we're compatible with a person. And yet we've adopted throughout centuries, throughout eons, that chemistry equals relationship success. Chemistry equals relationship success. So if two people are physically attracted to one another, they can engage in a relationship 
only to find out these days that you might be incompatible. This is why one of the things I do in my private coaching, by the way, there's a link right here to schedule a free discovery call with me. And by the way, there's a link below. My whole role as a coach is to teach you what questions you should be asking in the early stages of dating, especially before you give your heart to a man. These questions are based on your personality to determine if they're truly compatible with you and more importantly, vetting if they're emotionally mature enough to be in relationship. Because since this topic is about men over 40, well, roughly 75% of people who are over 45 years old, who are in the dating marketplace, are divorced. And with divorce comes an unraveling of the tapestry of our old lives. And many people are in some state of trauma through this experience, or they have child and wounds and traumas that have gone unaddressed. And then they repeat patterns of emotional unavailability or worse, poor relationship skills and poor emotional maturity in any future relationship. Why is this important to know? Because folks, stop being naive to the idea that chemistry equals relationship success. Stop being naive to the idea that men are the hunters and all they have to do, all you have to do is sit back in your feminine energy and let him claim you. Well, yeah, a man might claim you physically for the purpose of sex, but he may not even be remotely capable enough to be in a relationship. This is why, you know, to some degree, you have to be your own matchmaker. Now, what I mean by your own matchmaker is that you ask the questions to determine if you're compatible with one another. Ask the questions early on to determine if your lifestyles are blendable. And more importantly, ask the deeper questions to determine if you're actually with a person that's emotionally mature enough to be in relationship because financial success of a person does not equal emotional maturity let's get that you know someone who's successful a high value man doesn't mean that they're emotionally capable enough to be in a relationship so one of the things people don't like the fact that in my coaching it might seem like an interview process but i want you to think about an interview process if you're trying to get a job from a company and you'll do anything to do it, then the person is interviewing you for the job, but let's call it the job of girlfriend, okay? If you've put this person up on a pedestal, but in a true job interview, the person is interviewing you and you're interviewing them. And what interviewing means is an exchange of conversation to determine if there's a mutual compatibility with one another. That's what an interview is. Now, some might think that you're interrogating a person. Well, interrogation is a one-sided event. Basically, someone, you know, if we think of a detective and person has committed the crime, the idea of the interrogator is to slip the person up. But interviewing someone is actually how we get to know someone. Now, we can simply take out the word interview and replace it with the word being curious being curious to see if you're genuinely compatible with one another, if your lifestyles are blendable, and more importantly, is this person a grown-up enough to be in relationship? And this is why my channel is devoted to raising the consciousness of women in particular, because women oftentimes give their power away to men. It's been, you know, it's been passed down through eons, and I'm here to say you are in charge of your relationship destiny, not a guy. Okay, so what are some of the reasons why a man pulls away? Well, first, most of the time, not enough trust has been built in the relationship. Not enough trust, not a real sense of deep friendship. And a lot of people believe time together creates trust. And no, time oftentimes only creates attachment and in many cases, unhealthy attachment if you haven't built a true friendship and build trust. And trust is simply, does this pair, person care about my feelings as much as I care about my own feelings? Does this person have my best interest at heart? We think of trust mostly around fidelity, and of course that's important, but at the end of the day, trust is, does this person have my best interest at heart? You know, it's fascinating. We'll sleep with people with little or no trust built. We'll sleep with total strangers with little or no trust built. Trust is built through the curiosity of determining if two people are a good fit for one another. 
So what happens is a lot of women, good women, are choosing the wrong men for these four reasons. So let's dive into this right now. Put on my trusty glasses, put up my notes, bump, bump, bump. Okay. So number one, his life is in chaos. His life is in chaos. Maybe he's going through a divorce. Maybe he has issues at work. Maybe he has family issues in his life. The ground underneath him doesn't feel solid. When a man's, when a man's life is in a sense of chaos, it's very rare that he can lean into a healthy, happy relationship. And I, sadly, I witness women bailing men out financially. I see women bailing men out emotionally only to find out that this man will leave you because he wants to be a bright, shiny penny to someone new. So number the first thing you need to be prepared to recognize is, is his life in some sort of chaos? Is he going through a contentious divorce? Does he have a contentious ex? Is he going through financial issues? Does he have some job issues going on? And I'm not talking about situational things. I'm talking about something that's more substantial. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Please hit that like button. Please share this video. And please subscribe to my channel if you're brand new. Okay, number two. He's hung up on an ex or he's afraid of getting hurt because of his previous ex. You'd be surprised that a lot of men and women combined are still hung up on a past relationship or that past relationship that was contentious might put them in a category of fear around a, uh, exploring a good relationship, a person with a good woman. This is why to see, you have to do this interview process, find out about their past relationships. People, believe it or not, most people are honest. And if not, they slip up in their communication if you act from a curious place. But Jonathan, I'm not supposed to interview men. Folks, interviewing is how we get to know a stranger. You can't go to a job interview. You can't go to a job interview. You expect to be hired without asking some deeper questions with one another. But Jonathan, the dating process is supposed to be fun and light and airy. Yeah, fun, light, and airy gets you hooked on someone who might be incompatible with you. So I'm here to promote being your own matchmaker. Okay, number three. Now, this one is uh, something I talked about in the five glaring red flags video I did, but this is called covert incest, covert incest. And what this is, is a person, man or woman, making children such a priority in their life, it's at the expense of building a partnership with someone. The child takes on the role of emotional support in this person's life. Now, this isn't, this doesn't happen frequently, but I would say this happens 10 to 20% of the time that, especially since the demographic we're talking about is the over 40 demographic, where a man with typically their daughter, the daughter becomes a replacement spouse in this man's life from an emotional perspective. Usually the daughter is somewhere around 13 to 25 years old. And it depends on how contentious his marriage was and his relationship with his ex-spouse. But covert, I want you to look up emotional incest or covert incest and read up about this. This is becoming a, a relatively more common thing with men and women alike. So this isn't singular to men. And it's usually with the opposite sex child where they opt, the child becomes their emotional support person. So you could be a good person in this, in this man's life, and yet his child is his primary emotional support person. That's number three. And number four, he has unrealistic expectations about how love feels. Nobody is good enough. Women, and by the way, women do this as well. Meaning if it isn't perfect, there must be something wrong. And the minute there's some disagreement in the relationship, this is where men bail. That's right. There are a significant amount of men and women alike that have this glorified expectation around what love should feel like instead of really understanding that a relationship is a give and take, a relationship is a two lane street, a relationship 
is, is, is about being teammates with one another. And a lot of men and women operate from this false premise that love must be perfect or it's not a really good relationship. Have you experienced this before? I know I kind of operated a little bit that way. I've seen so many men and women operate this way where they're, again, the minute there's a bump in the road, they move on. This is why you definitely want to get a sense of someone's past life and, and really understand their ability to resolve conflicts. Okay. Person that has good communication skills will demonstrate it very early on because they operate from a place of curiosity in the dating, mating and relating realm versus a place of either being a know-it-all or a place of wanting to take from a person. And that's usually those love bombers, those are driven by lust and limerence. All right, is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? These are the four, four reasons why men over 40 might pull away from a good woman. There's certainly more than these four, but these are certainly four that we can explore today. And I think it's important to have a conversation about this. So I hope I provided value for you tonight. Let's, and, and if I have, again, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my uh, channel if you're brand new. And then in the description below, check out all the links to schedule a discovery call, to check out the books I recommend. I always talk about my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. And I highly recommend And there's a link below to get the book. All right, I think this will be a great place to start our Q&A. For those that know my format, if you have a question for me, write the word question, then post the question thereafter, or you can purchase a super sticker, super chat in the chat box for those that are on live. And if you want, you can purchase a super thanks if you're watching the replay. All the monies from the super stickers, super thanks goes to a scholarship fund in the name of my son, Connor Asley. That's a picture of him right there with his brother, Colin. He's my son who passed away four and a half years ago. And in his honor, I've started a scholarship fund to donate to causes like the Hoffman Process and Insight Institute, just to name a few. These are nonprofit organizations designed to help improve individuals' lives, particularly in their area of their limiting beliefs and their negative patterns that stem from their childhood wounds. So again, check us, uh, uh, you know, purchase a super sticker, or super chat. All right, let's see what questions we have coming in so far. Um, let's see, let's see. Jennifer says, I intentionally ask questions before ever going on a date, phone call as well. If we aren't a match, I just don't want to, I don't even show interest. This scares away the wrong guy. You know, I believe that the first phone call is the first date. The first phone call is the first date. That's a great opportunity to spend up to an hour just asking questions about the person before you make a commitment to meeting in person. Now, a lot of people don't know how to do this. That's why I created my private coaching right here. There's a link below. I will do that. There's a link below right here to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with the coach is right for you. But yes, I'm in full agreement, Jennifer. The first phone call is the first day. Jennifer also adds, I see so many men write chemistry is a must only on dating apps. What happened to similar values, honesty? Because most men and a lot of women believe that chemistry equals relationship success. If we have chemistry, we must be a perfect match. It comes back to what I shared before, those people that believe love should feel perfect because they're so hyper-focused on chemistry and not really understanding the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. If you're not familiar with the book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman, I highly recommend checking this out. By the way, there's a link below to get a copy of this book. Before the penis ever goes inside the vaginas, ladies, read chapter one of this about, uh, um, read chapter one in this book about trust and commitment. So you get a better understanding of the importance, as I shared earlier, that trust is one of the primary reasons why men and women pull away because very little trust has been built in the relationship. So check out that book to read that before you get in too deep. All right, let's keep going. Johanna says, curious sounds much better. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Neverly says, amen, resonating. Thank you so much. 
All right, let's see what questions you have for me. If you have a question, write the word question and then post the question there after. And that way I can address anything you wanna talk about today. CC says, Jonathan, you look great in the suit. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Uh, someone just wrote, I dated someone like that as well. I believe she was talking about the covert incest. Not so much emotional support with his daughter, but she was his companion to shop with them uh, weekday dinners. Okay. Well, it looks like we have a bashful group. If we have no questions that come in in the next minute, we're going to be wrapping up for this evening. So I want to give you a chance to ask me questions right now. You can certainly ask me questions about my beloved Marie as well. So here's your chance. Looks like we have a bashful group. We have no questions coming in. I'm going to give it 30 more seconds. <laughs> All right. Karen says, thank you, Jonathan. I appreciate that. Well, it looks like we have a bashful group tonight. So I think this will be a great place to wrap up because we have no questions coming in in the Q&A board. Folks, uh, I hope I provided value today by understanding the four reasons why men pull a, push good women away. Just as a reminder, his life is in chaos. He's hung up on his ex or uh, he has fear, fear of getting hurt because of his ex. Uh, covert incest, making a children their primary priority and their emotional support system. And he has unrealistic expectations about relationships. Okay, well, it looks like we did have a few questions come in. So let's, let's keep the ball rolling here. Wendy says, book recommendations for a troubled marriage. I think a good book to read, two good books to read would be, uh, I love this book by, um, by Doug and Naomi. Uh, it's called Making Your Second Marriage a First Class Success. I love this book. Great insight in this. But more importantly, I would check out the book by John Gottman, The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work. These are great books to help prepare you to improve your relationship. Also, I might include the book. And by the way, all the books I recommend is in the link below. The book by Barbara DeAngelis, How to Make Love All the Time. How to Make Love All the Time. These are great books. So thank you so much. All right. Uh, Kathy writes, uh, let's see. Kathy writes, question. Sorry, too hot here to think. Okay, that's not a question. All right. Uh, let's see. Johinka says, question. Is it because of insecurities and not being financially stable from a guy's perspective? Um, I'm not really understanding your question, Johika, or I apologize for butchering your name. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Thank you so much. All right. Angela writes, question, getting over a horrible relationship with a narcissist and being able to trust again. Um, I'm not sure you really have a question there, but yes, it's pretty hard to get over a horrible relationship, particularly with a narcissist. I think the question you're asking, how do you do that? I'm a big proponent of personal development, self-help, spiritual work, and therapy as a way to heal what may have happened in your past. And until your past is healed, it's going to be very difficult to lean into a relationship in the future. So I'm a big proponent of therapy, personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. Uh, culture, like Leotard says, John Gottman has really broken it down to its simplest forms. Yes, I agree. Thank you so much for stating that. Jacqueline writes, question. New boyfriend out of a marriage only one year, but it's clear he's not hung up on her and has a calm, stable wife. Great guy. Should I worry about that? You know, one year might be too soon for some people. Um, it's interesting. My girlfriend and I were talking about this this morning. We were talking about there's two types of guys, those guys that immediately attach themselves after a divorce to the next person or those the guys who become players. Now, th there are really more than two guys, but we were talking about how a lot of men go, wow, I love this freedom. And there's this there's this thing called dating apps and I can get laid whenever I want and I can be talking to five women at the same time. Um, here's the thing. You know, you have to 
I, I said earlier, interview someone, but really you're interviewing their character. And how do you know someone's character? First, you get insight into their life. You know, I had a client who worked with me some years ago and, and she's now happily in a relationship. They've been living together for about four years now. Um, the first thing she found out about, she got fixed up through a blind date. And um, the first thing she found out about him was that he had given a kidney to a total stranger. Like, who the fuck does that? Give a kidney to a total stranger? I was like, wow, Glenn's a great guy. Um, but I'm bringing this up because Finding out about a person's character, their humanity, their, their charity gives you real, and I'm not talking about someone who writes a check to a charity. I'm talking about someone who actively does things for the betterment of other human beings. And I said to her, even though he wasn't a fit for her, I said, look, he's a good guy. You got to give this guy a chance. And now she's happily in love, even though he didn't look good on paper when they first met. I think sometimes when we create the box of what a person's looking for, we don't look at the more important things and that's their character. So great question. Thank you so much for asking. All right. Uh, oh, there's part two. Question, should I worry that it's only been a year, things are going great? I think I answered that. So thank you so much. Vera writes, question. Hello, Jonathan. My boyfriend got divorced five months ago, and now he's in a serious relationship with me. But I find him very clingy, and it makes me feel, and and he makes me feel, I believe, suffocated sometimes. What should I do? You know, it's not uncommon for men and women to operate from a place of codependency of another person. Let's see if I've got the book. Uh, where is it? I'm, I'm recommending the book Codependent No More, not because you're codependent, but you may want to understand why this neediness is happening from them. I suspect he's feeling a bit lost after his divorce because, again, a divorce is the unraveling of the tapestry of our old lives. And a lot of people haven't done the work to reintegrate themselves and then they meet someone new. So, I would be cautious with a person that is in this state. Um, I'd really want to determine, is this person really capable of long-term commitment? Those are some of the things I talk about in my private coaching. Um, but more importantly, I, I would read this book just so you can understand, maybe get a sense of what he's going through and why he's so clingy. So Vera, thank you so much for that question. I really appreciate it. Rose says, how do you heal from a past relationship to find a good one? Personal development, self-help, spiritual work, therapy. Okay, personal development, self-help, spiritual work, and therapy. I wrote my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What, that's, what self-love is, is an integration of healing from past traumas to better be prepared for new relationships. I'm a big proponent of doing workshops um group workshops individual workshops uh alike to do healing I, it took me i mean quite frankly from my divorce till i met my beloved it was a 15-year journey of a lot of healing and i had some i had a significant relationship in that time it didn't work out thankfully she's in a great relationship right now i'm in a great relationship right now but i would say that after my significant relationship ended i needed another Four, three or four years of healing. Now, mind you, I lost a child in that time. I lost my mother. I didn't feel like working for a period of time, but it takes time to heal from a past trauma. So I would do personal development, self-help and spiritual work. So Rose, thank you so much for that question. Green King writes, question, and thank you so much for your time. What would you say is the most supportive way for feminine support to a masculine over age 40 with a 30 year with a 30 year age gap i face cultural differences wow a 30 year age gap are you the person 30 years older or are they the person 30 years older um when i think of masculine and feminine the way a lot of people view it i think of dominant and submissive and a lot of times overly alpha type of males 
want a submissive partner, which means that they're highly agreeable and they're willing to compromise their own um, standards for the guy. That's often, see, we have this grand expectation that they're alpha males are altruistic. Well, that's usually not the case, okay? Um, sometimes it's the case, but it's, most of the time it's not the case. I'm a big proponent of being in your individual sovereignty and your individual power. I like the book um, Personhood. I like the book Personhood. Check this out. To really integrate your own sovereignty of your masculine and feminine, so you can be better prepared to be in a cooperative, co-creative relationship rather than a one-up, one-down type of relationship where the man is superior and the woman is subordinate. So that's my two cents on that. So thank you so much for that question. All right, Joe Hika writes, question. Over 40 guys doesn't keep up with a woman. It's because of financial insecurities. Again, that's not a real question, but thank you for sharing your thoughts. Ah, uh, the super smart, successful divorce guy I met is a player. He has been on dating apps for years. He said, I was the first woman he met that intrigued him because I told him my standards. I bet you he has said that more than once. <laughs> All right. I think this will be our last question for the day. Question. How do you not give up hope to meet the right person? You give us hope with your lovely girlfriend, Marie. You know, last night, uh, Marie and I um, hosted a live stream and, and there's a my picture of my girlfriend and I, you know, I think, you know, we were, we were talking about this. We, we have our morning coffee and we, we kind of review what happens uh, a lot of times in my professional life because I like to get her feedback on some of the comments I get. But one of the things we talked about for both of us is that we both knew we would meet someone special in our lives that i mean that we didn't just hope it had happened we didn't hope it, i hope it happens i hope it happens i hope it happens we didn't just go i believe it happened i believe it'll happen i believe it'll happen we operated from a place of i know it will happen and so what we did prior as she shared in the video last night is we each did our own individual personal development, self-help and spiritual work so we could be better prepared when, when the right person comes. And one of the key factors in this we talked about is timing. Even though she and I connected a year earlier, the time wasn't right. Even though she came to Los Angeles to visit her friends and family, wasn't the right time for, to meet, for me to meet her. I, I was wrapped up with business things. And then when she came out again, it wasn't the right time. And it wasn't until I took a trip to Chicago that it was the right time. Timing plays a big part of this, but it's kind of like the, you know, the definition of luck. Luck is when opportunity meets preparation. We, she and I did all the prep work so that when the opportunity came, we call it luck, but I think it's better term is it was the right time. So I hope that helps answer your question. We operated from a place of not hoping it'll happen, not believing it happened. We operated from a place of, I know it'll happen. So then we let the universe do the rest of the work. That's how we operate it anyway. Thank you so much for that question, Patricia. I really appreciate it. Uh, and Jennifer says, thank you for answering my question. I believe timing as well. Thank you so much. Folks, I think this would be a great place to wrap up today. Again, I hope you find value in my videos. I hope this content helps shift your perspective and look at things from a different vantage point. I'm not here to sell you on the traditional rhetoric that men are hunters and all you have to do is lean back in your feminine energy and wait to be claimed because to me, that's just a bunch of rhetoric. The fact of the matter is human beings are riddled with flaws. Human beings are, are complex creatures. You know, this narrative that it's simple is bullshit. It is complicated. And how you sift through that complication is through awareness. This is why I created my private coaching. So again, schedule a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. All right, I think this will be a great place to wrap up this video. First off, I'm going to give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. There's a teddy bear. Give it or them a hug of love. 
because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I want to thank Jade and Annie and Jennifer and Onset and Patricia and Maria and Lynn and Lady or Linda Music and Johika and uh, ba, 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 Cece and Green King. Everyone, thank you so much. Hope you have a pleasant evening. You take care. Bye-bye now.